Hello and welcome and Happy New Year to Jump Advisories New Year webinar series. I hope you can hear me as people start to log in. I hope you can sort of uh, find a time just to quick or well, put a quick note in the chat box to say that you can hear us and we can sort of hear you as well. People are sort of firing in now, which is really good. So it's quite a busy webinar this morning, which is really good. So I'd like to wish you all a happy new year and welcome back. New year that was looking like it was going to be full steam ahead until Boris decided to have the lockdown that we all should have happened at Christmas, but he didn't. But there we go. So however, I think we're actually all better prepared for this lockdown. We've got two vaccines and I think across the globe, there's more to come. So there's a huge shining light at the end of the tunnel. So the big question today that we're going to ask as we start this series of four webinars is all about New Year's resolutions and how we can add value to our business. So in the series of webinars that we're going to do over the next four weeks, we're going to sort of help you or help you set up your business like never before in the new year. I'm going to look at New Year's resolutions today and share with you what we think are our New Year's resolutions. And then over the next three weeks, we're going to help you with giving you incentives really to stick to your resolutions and help them work. So we're going to look at the 10 most tangible assets in your business Four by the week after that, the 10 most intangible assets. And then the final week, we're going to look at the key levers that you need to be pulling and pushing to create value in your business. So new year's resolutions. We were all talking about this the other day, sort of uh, as, as, as a group together. And in the board meeting, Paul Jacobs came out and said the ancient Babylon's, 4,000 years ago were the first people to come out with New Year's resolutions. And how did Paul know that? Because he was actually mentoring them at the time. Right? That's, that's what he said. From I don't there. remember that conversation. <laughs> 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 New Year, Paul. But also, they were just the first people to actually hold and record New Year's and have honours in the New Year. So it's really sort of interesting that they were recording what was going on in the New Year and recording what was happening from there. But studies have started to sort of show what happens with New Year's resolutions. And I think it's important that we start to look at that. The study showed that 46% of people who made New Year's resolutions, and the most popular being losing weight, exercise program, quitting smoking, were likely to be successful. Okay. And over 10 times more successful if you made that resolution at the beginning of the year than if you made it at any other time in part of the year. So it's really important that this time of year that we start to make those resolutions and find out what they are about from a business point of view. But we all know that resolutions are hard to keep, they're sometimes difficult to keep. And certainly looking at some of the stats, 35% of participants failed in their New Year's resolutions because they had unrealistic goals. 33% of people who did New Year's resolutions didn't keep a track of them. And 23% actually forgot about the resolutions. So we think about that from a business point of view. It's very simple. You know, how many of us have got unrealistic goals that we can't keep? How many people don't track those goals so we don't know what, what our progress is like? And how many people don't actually write their goals down and therefore are easy to forget? The University of Bristol did an actually a very interesting sort of a study on this with 3,000 people. And it showed that 88% of people who set New Year's resolutions actually failed despite 52% of them saying that they felt confident that they would actually succeed. It was interesting, they had no stats for women, but they had stats for men. I don't know why they only had stats for men and not for women, but 22% of all men achieved their goals, but when they wrote their goals down and had their goals in very small, measurable pots. So if you think about the biggest goal that everyone sets is to lose weight they were saying if you set a pound a week or something along those lines then you're more likely to succeed so the key to success really when we set goals then is having measurable goals and goals that we've recorded and told others about those goals so on monday we had our first board meeting of the year and we were talking together about you know what we could be doing this year we talked about updating our resolutions we had sort of lockdown sort of in mind that that was going to happen but what we said was you know, we looked at what's working and what's not. And then we started to think that actually the business has only been going for four months. And I can't believe that we've only actually been going four months, but that's what we've been doing. Um, but we've now got data and it's data that we can start to measure. And it's data that we want to start to use to help drive our clients and help our clients move forward. So we know understand what, what's strategically important to them and what's urgent. And then we can start to increase or increase and improve our processes by looking at the data that we're coming back to help unlock the potential of others, which is what we are aiming to do with all of these webinars and things like that. So goals and resolutions. So I'm going to open it up to Paul and Dave now and look what's going on and see what they're. If you want to ask your own and 
talk about your own resolution, feel free to do so. Just either put your hand up or drop us a note in the in the chat box or the question box or just grab our attention somehow and we'll obviously put you live and we can sort of talk about your resolution and how we can help you maybe make sure you fulfill that resolution or maybe improve that resolution so i'm going to open it up to the guys first of all so paul and dave happy new year to you guys dave let's uh, open it with you first and foremost talk about resolutions and uh, happy new year h and, and paul as well and um and to paul sharp who's uh Paul's working. He's he's uh, properly and visiting um, because it, it's it's work that he's doing. So we've still got clients that are uh, in their offices, um, and uh, and we're still seeing them uh, where we can. So um, that's that's uh, that's good news. Um, so resolution it's an interesting one. Resolutions for me because um, I have never been um, a very good person in terms of making new year's resolutions and uh, when when we were putting this together h i was thinking about well why where's that come from and so a little bit of a <clears throat> sort of do trap but a personal story for me when i was 11 i was at school obviously um, and i got cancer in my ear and it was never one of those awful life-threatening things but at the time it was quite serious and i remember my parents been being very worried i missed a lot of school um, I couldn't hear for a while. There was all sorts of little things going on. But I was young enough to really think it didn't really mean that much to me. And although I was poorly, um, I think if I had it now, I'd be certainly much more worried. Um, but I got through it. I got over it. And I remember Dr. Robots was my doctor. And he said something to me, which at the time didn't really register. But then since then has, and it applies to kind of resolutions and New Year's resolutions. And he said, um, he, he words were along the lines of, now you've got a choice, go and make a difference. And that's what he said. It was quite simple and it was just at the edge of the bed and that was that. And it kind of went in one ear and I was at a hospital. I've been in there a, a number of months. and I just wanted to get out, play football again and build my strength up and see my friends. Didn't really mean much. But then as I got a bit older and I, I, I um, did my uh, university education in the States, that comment about go and make a difference really resonated. So uh, whilst I haven't set a New Year's resolution each year, um, I have had that almost wedded to me, go and make a difference. Um, I'm not, not a man who gets tattoos. Uh, my 19 year old son, got his first tattoo um, uh, not so long ago, much to my horror. Um, but I think if I was somebody who got a tattoo, that would be my tattoo. It would be go and make a difference. So, so my aim is in whatever I'm doing for that day to make a difference. And it's not meant to sound um, flippant in any way, but it's just that bit of, well, who, who can I help? What can I do? Um, and it doesn't have to be related to work. It can be related to my family, to my kids, to, to, to whatever it is. So that, that's, that's my resolution. Um, but to your point earlier, Howard, uh, in terms of writing things down, um, I absolutely know that when I do like gym stuff or whatever, if I write it down, it does make a difference. If I write it down, if I track it, if I make a note of it, um, I know that then it's going to make a difference. And even in lockdown, when I do it at home, everything I do in terms of fitness or whatever, I write down. I write down number of steps, I write down eat, I write down what I drink, everything I do, I write down. So there's no reason why that shouldn't apply to us in our businesses as well. It's got a long-winded way of answering the question, H, but um, that, that's, that's where I come from. Sorry, Dave, I didn't hear you there with your, with your hearing problem. <laughs> <laughs> I think from looking at that, it, it's, you know, as you say, writing things down is, is, is really important because uh, it, it makes you more accountable to them. I think that's what we're trying to say is it, it does make you more accountable to them. And I think when we started to do this on Monday, we, we looked at our jump forward plan for all those who haven't done a jump forward plan with us. That's planning for three years and then putting it down onto a, a sheet of paper for what your tasks are going to be for the next 12 to 18 months and breaking them down into small sizable chunks and I think it's important that you start to really focus on the things that move your business forward and you know I'm, I'm interested to hear what Paul's got to say about his Babylonian um, uh, New Year's <laughs> resolutions uh, but you know 
I think it's important that we start to write things down and start to look at things that we can actually affect. And I, I always say we, we talk about what you can control is what you can control. And don't worry about the rest. And I think that's really important when you set the resolution is can you control what you're setting to ensure that you get to the end of that uh, that resolution from there? Paul. Well, I mean, where do, where do I begin? I've got about, uh, uh, unlike Dave, I've got about five or six <laughs> resolutions. Um, I, I'm going to pick up on something Dave just said, which I, I, is actually something I felt quite, I feel strongly about, this making a difference. One of the things that I was certainly thinking hard about over the Christmas break uh, was this issue of, I, I suppose the word would be networking, acting as a conduit for people being able to connect people. I, I, I see that as really important, certainly in the things that we do, we guys do at Jump. Um, I think if you can offer assistance to people without necessarily asking what's in it for you, I think that makes a, a major difference to people. And I think, uh, you know, with our level of experience, certainly with my level of knowledge and experience and, and you know, 45 years in the industry, I know a lot of people. And, I, you know, there, there are almost on a daily basis, questions around issues that my clients have. And I often have answers, but I can also put them in touch with other people um, within our business and beyond our business uh, that can offer expertise and advice and support. And I, I think that I was thinking about this over the Christmas period and thinking about the times when people are, in a sense, most grateful for this service or support I give them. And it's often related to the connections I provide to them to give them answers to their problems, being that conduit, the go-to source of information. I was thinking that's something I'm gonna really work hard on, extending my network of contacts, extending my, my knowledge base, reaching out to people that maybe can add value to our business and indeed, very importantly, to my clients' businesses. So I see that as something I'm gonna to continue to do and do more of, um, be that conduit for my, my clients. I think there's a couple of things that I certainly, I think we all learned from last year and I don't think anybody would disagree with this. And one of them is, is really this issue of being agile and constantly strategizing. And one of the things that I definitely learned last year, I think we all did, was that this, this thing to stop every week and think about what's working, what isn't working. What do I change? And I, I think the problem that most of us have in a normal situation, we're so busy working, so busy dealing with the daily stuff, the minutia, um, it's really easy. In fact, it's almost impossible not to be dragged into earning a living, running your business, doing the things for your clients you should be doing, and really never finding that time to step back and look at what's working, what isn't working. And I think that for me, one of the big lessons from last year, and it's going to obviously going to continue, is this weekly situation This where I am definitely, and I have, I have been doing it anyway, but stepping back from what's going on around me and just asking myself some pretty strong questions. What, what do I need to do more of? What do I need to change? And what do I need to stop doing? And I, I think that's something that I felt very strongly about last year. I saw, I mean, bizarrely, and I think I've spoken to lots of people about this, um, whilst nobody, none of us want to go through what we've been going through, and we certainly don't want yet another lockdown, but as necessary as it is, and we're all yearning for normality. I think the truth is that it, it has given us this opportunity to recalibrate, to think about what we like doing, what we don't like doing, what works for our clients, what doesn't work, what we need to amend, what we need to invent. And I, to me, it's in a sense been a blessing in disguise because it, it did give me and you guys, Dave uh, and Howard and Paul, the opportunity to step back and think, well, okay, what works? And I, I think that whereas in the past, maybe we had this once a year New Year's resolution where historically, traditionally, January, I'm gonna stop doing this, I'm gonna do that, I'm gonna lose weight, I'm gonna go to the gym. I think now we're in the business of weekly having resolutions. It's almost a weekly resolution where you look at the situation and say, does this work? What do I change? What am I going to do different next week? So I think that the annual resolution becomes a weekly resolution. And for me, I think that's one of the things that I'm definitely, I've taken stock of and I'm going to continue to do on a weekly basis. And I didn't say monthly and I didn't say annual, annually. I definitely said weekly and I, and I mean that. And I think when you're running a business, you have to, especially in these bizarre times, be constantly weekly reviewing where am I, 
what needs to change? What do I need to introduce? How do I change this? What do I stop doing? For me, that's really important. And I see that as a blessing, a blessing from last year, something that I think has certainly changed the way I'm operating and, and certainly the way I've advocated my clients operate as well. Another, another point here, and I think it's an important one, um, this, you know, we always use, and you've got Einstein up here, and it's ironic because one of the things that we all say, the cliche, his cliche um, is, you know, the um, definition is of insanity is to keep doing what you've always done and expect better results or the same results. And we know that's rubbish and we know it is insanity. And I think that this, this position, this resolution question is also about what's just what's not working. You know, what do I just literally just stop doing permanently? And, and I, I think that, again, this, is, this, this situation, this drama, this global drama, we find out ourselves unwittingly involved in is the opportunity to ask that question. What do I literally stop doing? Is it stuff that doesn't work? Is it stuff I really don't enjoy? I think, I, that's I think, something I think, we all feel. I think, Paul, looking at that, that sort of very links into quite a lot of things that we've, we've been talking about over the last sort of 12, 18 months uh, from there is one of the sort of things that I've pulled out as one of my resolutions was to become more pointed in my questioning and and what i actually meant by that was rather than you know just answering people's questions is to create more questions from their questions to help them bring out the things within themselves that they already know and then develop them from there so looking at sort of more focused questions and things like that to really sort of right get people to really sort of develop themselves and then help them to develop that so they can develop that in, in instance with their staff i think a lot of managers tend to tell rather than question and i think that's the big thing that sort of changed through lockdown that i've noticed that is that the more questions that you ask then the more answers that you get and so to me it's driving to find the right questions and sometimes you have to keep asking questions to get to the right question and once you get the right question then the answers come very very easily from there and i think when we start to look at that susie has, has asked a question here that were they're preparing their business plans uh, at these these strange times and wonder whether they should start from the bottom line or the top line and the thoughts. And my thought from that is, it doesn't matter which line you start at, what we've got to start to think about is what effect it has. And I always think about the effect that it has on four different things. So the first effect is what effect does whatever line you address have on your people. And when we talk people, we talk employees, we talk clients, we talk candidates, and we talk suppliers. So what effect does it have on those people? So when you start to think about that line, the next line that you start to think about is what effect does that have on the strategy? So where's the strategy in that? And then the next line is the execution line. How well do you execute those sort of things? Because what we should be thinking about when we start talking about recession times and coming out of recession is we should start to think about not turnover not gross margin or gross profit not ebit or bottom line profit whatever you want to talk about from there what we should be thinking about is cash how quickly does cash come through your business and into your business and how much cash have you got readily available to actually invest in your business and move your business forward so whatever your line that you look at Susie it's not wrong and it's not right what we should be thinking about is what effect it has on those four lines on your people your strategy your execution and on your cash lines and if you get that right then what you start to see is a very very quick development of your business because you can see how each change impacts the business all the way through so I think one of the things that I've talked about when questioning is about those type of things is get the questioning right okay then you get the right answers from there so yeah. work on the questions yeah. first and foremost I, I was going to say as part of that to, to add to your point um had it's important susie that you know clearly you've got to start somewhere and you've got to have some numbers and you've got to have something to aim for but one of the phrases that i use over and over again with the clients i work with is is the phrase that strategy is epistennial you know, when I was at Spring, we used to have an annual strategy review. We'd all get together, we'd go away. Um, our leader was an ex rank Xerox, Xerox person, and he would have formulas and he would have pages and pages of stuff that we had to go through. And then we were not allowed to deviate. The strategy was the strategy and woe betide anyone who, who changed. What I've learned both from working in bigger companies and smaller companies, is that agility is key. And 
if you sit there, Susie, and you put those numbers in, and in three weeks' time, something comes along to change, you as the business leader feel the absolute freedom to change because episodes come and go, things happen. You know, we're in this situation now till um, mid-February, probably mid-March, we don't really know, but that will have an effect on our engagement and how we engage and it will have an effect on our numbers. And, and that's okay. As long as we stick true to our purpose, as long as we stick true to keeping our people informed and engaging with them, then the business will perform. And uh, your strategy may have to change uh, it may have to deviate. I think 2021, for, for most businesses that we're engaged with at Jump, is a year of transition. It isn't about going back to more of what we did in 2020. It's looking back and thinking, well, what do I need to change? Because the world is changing. Um, wh whatever happens in the next five years, um, the McKinsey report from just a couple of weeks ago is that no less than 25 of all employees will be working from home in the next five years. Now, that may not apply particularly to your business, but it absolutely, absolutely will be to your client's business. So therefore, what does recruitment look like when more than a quarter of the workforce is going to be working from home? And how do you transition into that, that new, I think new normal is the phrase that people use. But so, so strategy is episodic. It's not an annual thing. Uh, get, get going with it, get those numbers down, but recognise that they, they may have to change. It's quite... I, go, on, go on, sorry, Paul. Yeah, I was going to say, I think one of the things I would add to your point, Dave, is that uh, we talked earlier, uh, pre-Christmas, about 90-day sprints. Yes. And, I mean, I spent a brilliant afternoon yesterday with a client, uh, and we, we spent a lot of time looking at these 90-day sprints, um, and to your point, Dave, I think it's very, very difficult, nigh on impossible, actually, at the moment to even remotely accurately predict what this year is going to bring from a, from a, uh, a numbers perspective. Certainly it's worth a try to have a, have a go at it, uh, and we need to. But I think you can definitely, within reason, come up with answers over the next 90 days and then focus attention, focus um, uh, activities on those 90-day goals um, and I would certainly advocate doing that. And so whereas before we would look at annual targets, annual budgets and so forth, I think there's a lot to be said right now for considering 90 or 180 day sprints, looking at setting short term goals, short term targets and making the people aware in our business what those short term goals and targets are um, and really focusing hard on achieving them. Just another point I'd make, Susie, is that I think whilst you're, whilst you're hit, understandably talking about you know, the top line, the bottom line. And to Dave's point, again, I think, you know, let's consider the strategies. What is it that we want to introduce into our business that provides better quality services and support to our clients and our candidates? What impact might that have on our bottom line, on our top line? So I think it's about also looking at, as Dave says, the strategies of the business, how we're going to prepare our people to deliver those strategies, the learning and development they need, um, and making sure that we deliver on it on, on those points to Dave's point. Once you make a decision, go with it. Um, often in my experience, when we introduce strategies in businesses I've managed in the past, uh, people were very prone to try and look to give up when they didn't get instant success with something we were trying out. Um, and the honest truth is that you just have to persist in of, often in situations. You can't always expect instant results. Sometimes strategies take six months, a year. For things to really start to appear as long as you're tracking to see that there are evident there's evidence that there's improvements you stick with it um, too often people set these strategies these resolutions we started talking about them and if they don't get an instant result they give up and often they're giving up at the very moment when things were about to turn in their favor so i think it is important to stick with what you're looking to do to to keep going but look at it from a 90-day perspective 180-day perspective and consider what you can achieve in the next three to six months and really focus in those areas as we did yesterday. The other thing we also did yesterday related to this point was we changed the bonus plans and we looked at the behaviours we were looking for from certain people in the business and we adopted or adapted the bonus plans to reflect rewards for those behaviours because bonus plans, as you all know, um, to a large extent dictate behaviours. So if you want people in your business to behave in certain ways, 
have a look at the way in which you reward them, the benefits, the bonus plans, and consider making some amendments in those areas too. It's quite interesting that, you know, uh, Dave mentioned McKinsey's there, the, one of the McKinsey reports, and talking about you know more people be working from home. They also put out some of their expectations in 2021, and it was that individuals and employers will start taking wellness more seriously, and that's getting that work-life balance. Mm-hmm. And what everything that we've talked about there all leads back to that first point that we said that you know if you look at those four things: people, strategy, execution, and cash people are the most important thing at the top of those so how we treat the individual so one of the um, you know resolutions that paul sharp came out with was be serious about engagement of your team you know about how you're training how you're developing how you're mentoring how you're coaching your team it becomes really important especially if people become more disparate and are working from home and they're sort of distributed around the around the, the country and i think it's important that we start to understand the feelings of people and i think one of my resolutions was you know i i, I put a blog out this week so or an article on, on linkedin this week uh which was about you know goals motivation and uh, you know purpose and one of those things was about you know i'm far more productive when i feel happier within myself and that happiness isn't about completing the task it's the happiness about being on the journey of delivering that task and it's the what goes on and i find that when i'm doing a task certain bits where i find that i'm strong i will try work on the development of that strength where i'm weak i'll start to develop on that gap and start to read things that will help me improve and 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 work on that gap and so i'm investing in myself and i think it's important as leaders that we invest seriously in the wellness of our people and it's not just about the physical and mental wellness it's the all-round thing about that so you're training and development how they feel how you make them feel how the business feels do they feel part of your purpose and i think as that as a as a resolution moving forward is a really important resolution to make sure that you engage with your staff in a way that drives your business forward and that means that you've got to make sure that they are happy and performing at the best that they can be constantly and that means training and development of, of, of their staff and howard I'll, I'll just add in something that I, I didn't say earlier but it's and it's quite personal in, in that one of the other things that uh, ironically i've discovered through this these lockdowns these series of lockdowns is that um I actually feel more healthy, it's ironic, um, than I've felt in quite a while. And I think that's precisely because I'm sleeping a bit more. I think we all are a little bit, you know, we're not having to dash around quite to quite the degree we were before. Um, I'm getting a bit more time for myself um, and I'm exercising more. And I, I think that uh, I guess this point you're making is a very valid one. And that is if you're looking at also what are we going to do differently this year? What resolutions are we going to have? I think being kinder to yourself is a very important one. Looking after yourself a bit better than you've done in the past. And I, listen, I speak as somebody, anyone who knows me, even remotely, knows that I'm a total workaholic. Um, I mean, it's just, it's not, a, it's a good thing and it's a bad thing, but it's who I am. And I've always done that. I've always worked ridiculous hours from since when back, way back. Um, it's almost, sometimes it's almost a question of sort of beating myself up. If I'm not working, I feel guilty. It's, I'm sure that people listening understand that sentiment. And I, I've realized that actually I can be more effective if I'm feeling uh, more alert. And, uh, you know, I feel healthier. Uh, and I, that's something I'm going to work on. I'm not for one minute going to get on this webinar and say that you're going to hear Paul Jacob say is changing because that's a lie. I know how I'm wired but I am going to try harder to look after myself. Uh, uh, And I think that if you're going to ask your, uh, if you're going to look at your people in your businesses and expect them to be kinder to themselves, to look after themselves more, it starts with you. If you don't, if you don't look after yourself, how do you manage others effectively? I do think it's it's interesting, Paul, um, about asking people how they are. And I've always said that if you can, if you ask somebody, how are you? it's really important that you add one word to that sentence to make it valid. And that is, how are you today? Or how are you feeling today? And I think if, if with, particularly with those of us who are working remotely, if you can start 
when you, as a leader, engage with one of your staff with that question. And, and for example, if you, you have, a, I don't know, 12, 15 minute catch ups at the beginning of each week with everybody, um, allow yourself just a little bit longer to ask that question, how are you feeling today? And just to Hal's point earlier, drill a little bit into that to make sure that they're okay, that they're really okay, and that you're showing that you're interested in them as a person as well as a performance. Um, my daughter is a graphic designer. Um, she works from home um, uh, in, in our house. Um, because she's a graphic designer, she has every single brilliant piece of Apple product and it consumes Wi-Fi. Um, and when you've got six kids, four of them at school, and they're also working, um, Wi-Fi becomes really um, a, a thing to grab hold of. It doesn't matter how much you spend, you can't have enough when you've got everybody working from home. And and she she gets on the call first. She's she, And then I heard her boss come on. So this is on the 4th of January, the first day back. They've had two weeks off. And the first question he said to her was about a piece of graphic work that she has to do for that day. He didn't ask her how her Christmas was. He didn't ask her about New Year. He didn't ask her how she was. I just happened to be in the living room, which is where um, she set up. And um, it was just interesting to me. And afterwards I asked her then, how did you feel about that? And he, he, she just said, well, that's how he is. He's only really about work. He doesn't have, he doesn't really ask us about personal things. And then he, she said, which is really interesting for anybody on this call, whether you feel it. And then she said, but he's a man. So <laughs> I kind of don't expect it. That's now terrible. my daughter's a 21 year old savvy um, uh, person. And I just thought that was really an interesting perspective um, because I think it's important. Feelings do matter to, to Howard's point earlier. And in terms of resolutions for the new year, I think if we can if we can have a resolution to get as close to our people as we can, because we can't get physically close in terms of an office, um, but if we can get emotionally a bit closer and bring down our own barriers and our own perceptions, if we have, of, oh, they won't want yep. that. I think that will be a really good thing. I think it will help yep. to transform the, the businesses that we run. I, I think, I think it's, uh, I'll just jump in there. I think it's quite interesting that, Dave, and I think we talk about that taking se that wellness seriously. And I think we sort of step that little bit further on from there that, you know, when we were sat down on Monday in our board meeting, we talked very much about our brand and our values and whether we are living our brand and living our values. Are we being authentic to what we were? And we, I think you, Dave, asked the question of all three of us, uh, all four of us actually, about you know what our view of our, what, where did we want to take the business and how do we want to look at that? And did that fit with our authenticity of our brand? And I think that's going to become a very big drive. And I know Bloomberg have, have put out that this year is going to be the year of brand and the year of value and the year of authenticity. And I think it's important that when we start talking about questions like that is, you know, are you being generally authentic to your staff? So when you're asking the questions about how they are, do you genuinely mean that? And I know I've done this with quite a number of my clients just recently about helping them set up their structure for uh, reviews, whether it be a weekly review, monthly review, quarterly review. And the review all starts with about how they are and what they are. And what I've got them asking their, 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 their employees is what are their goals, both internally in work and externally from a personal point of view, both from right. a family point of view, from a finance point of view, from a health and well-being point of view. So they get a far better rounded understanding of what their people are actually like and what they're striving for. And what that actually means, it was interesting when the first client I was doing it with, they, they were asking, well, what will the, what, how will this help me? And I said, well, this will help you motivate your people far more uh, in a far more in-depth way than before because you're not just motivating them about cash and an incentive it's a long-term motivation because it's about personal and it's the personal side I think that we've got to get more involved with that really helps us to sort of develop our people and our business more and I think we said in the first week of lockdown I think Paul and I were on a, a webinar in the first week of lockdown that we said if you look after your people your people will look after your business yep. and if you're people look after your business your business will be looked after okay and i think it's important that we go back to that as a, as a resolution that we can't lose sight of our people at this moment in time um, uh, how could i just add something to to your point and it's just something i felt strongly about in the last few days 
the the news is is really dire. I mean, if you watch the news as we all must do, particularly in the evening, it is really depressing. You know, you're just desperate for some good news. I mean, Arsenal are winning a few matches, so that's cheered me up a bit. But beyond the Arsenal, I don't. There's really not a lot in the news that's going to make anybody cheerful. And I, I, I feel. I feel that we need to be mindful of this point. You know, we know that January traditionally is a tough month. It, it, it generally is. Um, you know, it's cold, it's wet, it's damp, it's dark. And we, you know, it's the beginning of the year, Christmas is over, the bills are arriving for credit cards and so forth. It, every year, and actually it works in our favour in the recruitment industry because it's also typically and traditionally the time of the year where people make decisions to change jobs or get on with their, you know, changing their lives in one shape or form, which is of great benefit to our industry. However, this year, we, of course, have a third lockdown. And I think that uh, the news is very, very, very hard to deal with. We need to be very aware of that and the impact that it has on the um, mental well-being of the people that work with us. And it does have an impact on their mental well-being. Keep in mind, there are people now furloughed again, um, at home again, um, and they need constant contact from you if you furloughed people. Don't forget them, keep in touch with them on a regular basis every week, make sure they're okay. Uh, and for those guys that are working, obviously keep close to them as well. And I think that we have to make an extraordinary effort now, specifically now, even more perhaps than we've done in the past to get people into a strong mental position because I'm hopeful and I'm sure we all are that this is the, the sort of darkest before the dawn scenario that hopefully in the next three months with the vaccinations circulating, things will improve by the time we get to the spring period. We've always said that. I'm still very, very hopeful that's the case. But it is a pretty bleak period. And I think we need to be very upbeat as leaders. We need to be, to your point, you guys, very close to our people, especially right now, the first few weeks back into the new year where people are feeling pretty low based upon what's going on in society. So just a very important point to make. I think as we sort of move forward from there, I think one of the things that we've got to start, and, I, and one thing that I started to sort of write down uh, as, as, as a, as a well, classic as a, as, a, as a New Year's resolution or not, was I need to become more inquisitive in what's actually happening from a, a global standpoint that will have an impact on me as personally, as well as the businesses that I'm working with and working from there. And I think it's important when we start to look at certain trends and certain things you can pick out the negative side and you can pick out the positive side and to me i made a point that said one of my views was going to be that i'm going to start to look at the most positive trends and how can i get myself on that positive trend and if you start to look at that the global gdp according to bloomberg's is likely to grow by five to six percent next this year which to me says there's a massive positive outcome coming this year and how do we get onto that? So to me, part of my self-development is all about looking for things that I can say, right, okay, how, you know, if these are the most cleverest people in the world and these are what they're saying, how do we capitalize on that further down the line? What do we do to grow on that? And that starts with your strategy and that leads back to what we're doing constantly. And I think it's important that we look for positivity. What you're saying, Paul, the, the, the news is full of negative uh, connotations at the moment and i think we've got to look at the positive things that we can sort of work for because there are lots of things i was speaking to a client this morning i was doing a, a, a video mentoring session this morning with a client and we talked about um how indoctrinated people get with don't call that client don't speak to that client don't do this don't do that they never do this they never do that mm. and yet they've probably never even spoken to that client you know and it's about getting rid of all that negative vibe and go approaching everything. And they were saying, I, I know every client in my area. I've been here for X amount of years. And I, yeah, they, possibly they do know every client in their area, but are they dealing with every client in their area? Are they talking with every client in their area? What are they doing to do that? So look for the positive things that are out there and look at how you can attach yourself to those positive things. And then what does that mean as it trickles down the line, okay, into your business and beyond? And I think that is where myself, it's about becoming more positive. If you start to look for the positive things, guess what happens? You start to see more positive things. You start to see more positive things. 
and it's a, a well-known fact that you know the more positive a person is the more opportunities that they spot the more negative person is the more closed off to opportunities that they become so it's about opening up your eyes for the opportunities that are out there now and driving that and i think that was one of my my big resolutions for myself was to become more inquisitive to what's going on in the marketplace to find the positive trends and follow those trends and see if i can get on the back of those trends to work from there paul very quiet there sorry, Dave. sorry. I, i've got a, a buddy who i know really well and uh, he was interviewed in the magazine that goes out with the rsa um, and he said, oh, my interviews in this in this magazine, I had a quick look online. This is a little while ago. And one of the questions he was asked by the interviewer is, so, Steve, what motivates you? And his answer was fabulous. His answer was whatever is around the next corner. Mm. And I thought, what a lovely, lovely answer, because it was focused on, you know, you go to a corner, you can't see what's around the corner. But he was his motivation was well it's something in the future something that's just around the corner whatever that is i'm really looking forward to seeing what that is and i think that's quite important particularly when we're in a time where as paul says the news is quite bleak um flip side of the news of course is that more people are catching this, this disease less people are dying from it there's a vaccine there's a lot of positive stuff even in the negative yeah. so if we can take um take a, a heart from my buddy Steve Moore's answer of motivated by whatever's around the next corner. I think it will stand us in good stead, particularly in the next um, seven to 10 weeks as, as we're back to where we didn't want to be, um, but we are where we are. And isn't that true though? Isn't that exactly one of the joys of life that you, you know, if you have a, an attitude that says, let's go with this, see where it goes, and you kind of always say that old cliche, you open up your arms to the universe, see what happens. I think it's quite remarkable, the, the, the amazing things that happen. We've got that example ourselves last year where the pandemic um, kind of was the catalyst for us opening up a new business, something brand new and exciting. And, and I've spoken to many other people who have had other experiences during this lockdown, during this pandemic, that has led to really great things occurring for them. And I think that's a great, attitude that yeah. attitude that says look let's, let's not worry about things we cannot control let's not worry about pandemics economic cycles we have no control over those things let's focus on the things we can control and and let's see where life takes us and i think having that very positive attitude is brilliant and you know what people love to work with leaders with that positive mindset um and yes there's some risk involved but life's full of risks and you can spend a lot of time worrying about things that never happen um, and expending energy in negative areas. Much better to use that energy and to, to, uh, to focus on the things you can control, the things that can make your life better and the, and the lives of people around you considerably better, the people that you lead. But I, I'm, I know it sounds a bizarre thing to say, especially given the fact that I've just talked about how bleak everything is and the news and so forth, but I'm actually really excited about this year. I know that the next few months are going to be tough, but I actually do think that as we get through this year, it's going to be a considerably better year than last year. And to the point I think Howard made, I think we are preparing, bizarrely, we're preparing for 2022. Howard, you've got your spreadsheet that's appeared. Yeah, no, no, it's, yeah, it's fine. <laughs> so I think this year is uh, all about making sure that we're getting our businesses really up and fit for what I think the back end of this year in 2022 is going to be providing. And it's going Here's to be a little, bit, a, little, a little bit of encouragement, Paul. Remember Mad Max, the movie? I, I thought you were talking about the bloke I used to work with, actually. He was oh, it could be as well. We've all known a Mad Max. Mad Max was set in 2021. Was it? <laughs> <laughs> so we're here. So we can all walk around in uh, Mel Gibson and Tina Turner costumes. I was going to say, Tina what? Turner about to burst into my front room. I'm a bit that's worried a, about it. That's the positive bit. So, so let's look at, let's bring this back on to, you know, uh, where we are, because obviously we're coming to the end of our time here. Okay, so 
today's was all about setting up and sort of looking at new res resolutions and looking at ideas that we should be implementing into our businesses and, and help you plan your business. So we've already been working on our jump forward strategy for quite some time and we review that on a constant basis. If you want to contact us about a jump forward plan then and developing that plan with you, then feel free to contact us and we will set that up as, as quickly as we can. As I said at the beginning, the next three weeks to us are all about how we can then take those new new year's resolutions okay and help you stick to those resolutions possibly change those new year's resolutions so what we're going to look at next week we're going to look at the 10 most tangible assets in your business and what you can do with those tangible assets to help you grow your business and work from there the following week then we'll flip the coin and look at the most 10 most intangible assets and then the final week we'll look at the you know the levers you need to pull to actually drive the value of your business up i think if you sort of understand all of those processes and all those sort of things then when you start to write your you know jump forward plan and write your business plan for this year you start to see areas that you should be working on and you should be developing you also start to look at areas within your business that you may not be working on at the moment and may be ignoring which might be actually critical to your business moving forward so i'd like to thank you for your time guys it's been much appreciated welcome back to 2021 i think it's going to be a great year for all of us i think there's lots and lots of things that we can be really you know upbeat about and motivational about and one thing that we've got to remember is the more vaccines that come out the quicker the pandemic dies down the quicker the business will remove uh, sort of revolve back to where it could be and should be and that's why people like bloomberg etc are forecasting a global gdpr growth of between five and six percent which is a huge growth globally if we can all get on the back of that then we'll be all in a really good place so that leaves me to say thank you very much guys paul dave thank you very much Pleasure, uh, paul, thank you hopefully uh, happy new year, everyone and uh, see you next week happy new year folks happy new year guys and uh, look forward to seeing you all next week